We need to get to here where we have all of the parts out on the table and the lower unit disassemble. Got a drain screw here, vent there. We're gonna pop those and let the oil drain out. Couple of 10 mils here. Now that we got the carrier out, our next thing is going to be to get that pinion nut off right there. That is the pinion nut holding on the pinion gear, and we will be able to pull the drive shaft out of the lower unit once we get that nut off. Then we'll be able to pull out the forward gear out of the gear case as well. We need to take the water pump and the housing and all that stuff off, so we'll take that off. And that's going to get pretty much everything out of the lower unit. We did not take out this needle bearing. There's one right there. And then also there is a race right there for the forward gear. We didn't take those two things out, but everything else is out of the gear case. Now we're going to clean this and then we'll come over here and talk about each and every one of these parts and what they do. Now that we're here, we want to start by talking about the lower unit and how it gets water. So these are the lower unit water pickup screens. The water is going to come in here into the lower unit. So your water comes into that hole right there and then it goes into this hole right here. Once the water gets to here, it is going to be coming up through this hole right here because this item here sits in here like this. So you see how the water comes up like that? And this item is actually going to be called the drive shaft bearing carrier. So that right there is basically a carrier where there is a bearing inside of there. These are also your drive shaft seals. So these seal the lower unit and the drive shaft comes up through there. So here is our drive shaft and this is going to come up out of the lower unit. Here's the splines that attach it to the crankshaft. Once the water comes into here, it gets up to this part right here, which is the water pump base gasket that sits on top of it like this. So this whole thing sits like this. And if you look, there's only one hole here for water to get up. And that's this cavity right here. This little opening is on the, where the water pump is going to sit. So we've got this plate like this, water gets into here. And then our impeller sits on the drive shaft like this. So as the drive shaft spins, this spins like this, the water comes up, the impeller pushes the water over and then that goes through this cup right here. So this cup sits on top of the impeller like this inside of this housing and the water will go through the cup, that little hole right there, and it will go up that little hole right there, pushing that up. And then this will go up to the power head. So that is your water tube that goes up and that's basically how the water pump works. You got an impeller, it's gonna have that little area right there. So that's a little keyway which is what this is right here. They call this a Woodruff key and the Woodruff key actually sits inside of the drive shaft right there. So that little hole right there takes that key and then that key locks the impeller on it and as the drive shaft spins, it pushes the impeller, pushes the water up through the housing and out. There is also an O-ring right here. So this O-ring sits right there to seal it to the plate and that's how the water pump works these screws right here what holds it down along with those two screws right there that hold this whole assembly down underneath it you have this which is a base gasket that gasket just helps to seal it and that takes care of the functionality of the water pump and how the water flow is now outside of that 
Another item that we can talk about is the anode. We got a lot of videos on corrosion and how anodes work, so we won't cover that. That just sits right there, no big deal. As far as the functionality of all the gears and everything, this right here goes in the front of the case. It is the forward gear. On the back of it is a tapered roller bearing that rides along the race that's in here. So right there is a race inside the lower unit. And that is how this is gonna sit like this. And then this is going to be a reverse gear. Our reverse gear just sits in this, which is our bearing carrier. The bearing carrier has a ball bearing right here. This sits inside of that like that. And so these two will go together like this. This is our pinion gear. The pinion gear will assemble right like that. So it will connect between the two. And these gears never actually really touch. And it has a different tolerance between all three of these. This is going to make these spin all the time and pretty much gear lube goes in between them so that there's never metal on metal contact. But as you can see, this is always going to make that gear spin. Now what engages the gear to the prop shaft is what is called the clutch dog, which is this right here. And this rides on the prop shaft. So here you've got a, another bearing and this bearing sits like this which sits underneath this, which goes on the drive shaft. So you've got this bearing and the two washers, and that all sits on the drive shaft and attaches this pinion gear with the pinion nut. That all assembles on the bottom of our drive shaft right here. And then this just locks in like that on the bottom, boom, and then you have the pinion nut that holds that gear onto the drive shaft. So as the drive shaft spins, it spins the pinion gear and the pinion gear then makes the forward gear and the reverse gear spin. Now, something interesting that you want to talk about is this right here is basically a little piece of plastic, but it sits also in here. So this is like a sleeve that sits in here and that's going to sit in there like this. Now you'll, the one thing that you want to know about is that inside of this sleeve is channels. So you see those little threads basically that are inside here. Those threads are what moves gear lube from down on the bottom of the shaft to the top of the shaft, which then lubricates this bearing that is in here, which is on the top of the drive shaft. So the drive shaft is going to come through here and then through here then have these two on it with the pinion gear on the bottom of it. That is very important because if you have a problem with this or you don't have enough gear lube in the lower unit, it won't be able to get gear lube up to the top of this bearing. And if that bearing doesn't get lubricated, then it can lock up and then, you know, you'll lock up the drive shaft, break the top of it off, kind of like this right here. Same thing on a bigger lower unit. You can see how those are twisted. The power head basically just spun this right off because the lower unit locked up. Now, how it shifts gears is going to vary depending on the lower unit. So how it's gonna shift is basically inside here that is hollow. There is a little hole in here in the prop shaft. And then this spring sits inside of here. So that's gonna go all the way to the back. Then there's this little push rod that goes in like this. And as you can see, it goes all the way down. You can see the spring is depressing. That spring is what's going to keep tension on this. What happens is this clutch dog rides like this. You can see that right there, there's a hole there. The spring goes in, the pin goes in, and then this will go down on top of that. So the spring will be on the back side of this, and then this rod right here actually sits on the, this pin, which holds this together this spring then covers it up. So let me show you what that looks like. In order to put this together, it's not too hard. We just got to push this spring down and then put a little screwdriver like this down in there to hold it. And now we can bring this screwdriver like that, put our clutch dog on here. Pull it out, there we go. Now this can go right here, 
And so you see how it goes back and forth. And that's basically how the, the lower unit is going to shift. Now you've got this spring right here. that's going to sit on here. Which is going to hold that pin in. But now this is going to go back and forth. This gear is going to sit on like this. This gear is going to sit like this. And so as the prop shaft spins, you see how the front one is engaged and spinning while well, this one is free. Now, whenever you shift it, that pushes this back, which then rotates that gear and that's how it engages it. How this operates is that you've got this shift shaft. So whenever you shift it, this sits here. Obviously all this is contained within the lower unit, but whenever you have this like this, that's neutral. So it's gonna be neutral. Whenever you push it up, it lets it go to forward. You push it down, goes to neutral. And then you push it down again, it brings it all the way up to here, which then puts it into reverse gear. So as you push it down, it switches gears. And as you push it up, it switches gears back. And that's pretty much the shift shaft and how that works. There are other lower units that are bigger where this is not really a push rod like this. It is actually a lobe that shifts back and forth. So as you spin the shift shaft, it moves it back and forth, but it's the same concept of moving this clutch dog in and out to engage these three little teeth that engage onto our gears. Now remember how we said that you had gear lube between these and not necessarily um, any actual metal on metal or teeth on teeth? That is done by the use of these, which are shims. And each gear case is shimmed specifically to make sure that there is a tolerance and a gap between this gear and this gear and this gear and this gear. So you've got your forward backlash and your reverse backlash. And backlash is basically just the distance between this. So you notice how tight that fits. That is like a perfect fit. So if this gear here is up a little bit, it leaves a gap. If it's down too far, it's touching the teeth. That's bad. You'll wear out the gears and you'll wear out the bearings, premature failure. So what we're talking about with the backlash is going to be the distance that this gear is either up or down, which makes it closer or farther away from the gears. And then you also have a shim on these gears, which will push these gears in or out. This will either be in farther or out farther. So it's gonna be closer to this gear or farther away from this gear. And that is basically all your backlash is. It's very important that the lower unit has the proper shims in it to make it right. These cases are what's messed up. All these gears and these shims and everything is pretty much exactly the same. It comes out with the exact same tolerances, the exact same dimensions. It is all basically identical with the way machining is done. It is these cases that have the issues. So each one of these cases might be a little different. And that is why on the bottom of here, you have numbers stamped. So if you look here, you see how that is a P plus seven right here, that P plus seven, and then you've got a F and an R minus two plus five. So that is actually how off the case is. So the pinion is 0.7 or whatever the, the exact, I don't know if it's centimeters, millimeters, I can't remember exactly what the um, decimal points are because each case is gonna be different, but this is 0.7 off on the pinion and it's point or plus five off on the reverse and minus two off on the forward gear. So then you're going to use shims in order to get that, that distance right. Those numbers tell you how off the gear case is itself and then you use the shims to get those numbers down in order to get the right tolerances and distances between your forward, your pinion and your reverse gears. And that is how a lower unit works.